must be a sender because all information has to have a sender. Conclusion number one. Conclusion number two. Since the density and complexity of the DNA encoded information is billions of times greater than man's present technology, we conclude the sender must be supremely intelligent. Hmm. He says, what does this mean? It means the information encoded in DNA far exceeds all current technologies. Hence, no human being could possibly qualify as the sender who must therefore be sought outside our visible world. Starting to see the power of this argument now. Conclusion number three. Since the sender must have encoded or stored the information into the DNA molecules, constructed the molecular biomachines required for the encoding, decoding, synthesizing processes, and designed all the features for the origin of life forms, we conclude the sender must be purposeful and supremely intelligent. So where did the sender's intelligence and creative power originate? Well, there's only two possibilities. Number one, we can have a regression of senders backwards till we finally get an infant intelligent power. In other words, you can say, who created God? Well, there's a super God. Well, who, who gave that super God all the intelligence? Maybe there's a super, super God who gave the super God the God. Well, who gave the super, super God? And you can go back and back and back, but eventually you're going to get to the original one. Or you can just say there's one eternal sender with infinite intelligence and power. That's called Occam's razor. When you have those two possibilities, take the simplest and the simplest is, there is one all-powerful being. Conclusion number four. Since information is a non-material fundamental entity and cannot originate from material quantities, we conclude the sender must have a non-material component called spirit. God is spirit. Number five. Since information is a non-material fundamental entity and cannot originate from purely material quantities, and since information also originates from man, we must conclude man's nature must have a non-material component. Man has spirit. Number six. Since information is a non-material fundamental entity, we can conclude the assertion that the universe arose and evolved solely from mass and energy is now clearly refuted. In other words, the worldview of materialism, folks, has to be false because we can now show that there is a non-material component of this universe. And finally, number seven, since biological information originates only from an intelligent sender, and all theories of chemical and biological evolution require that information must originate solely from mass and energy alone, no sender. We conclude all theories of chemical and bi biological evolution are false. The theory of evolution, folks, is false. It cannot be true unless you don't want to believe in reality. Do you see the power of this argument? Information is a powerful, powerful tool. And that information came from God. So the logical deduction, remember our goals, the information all life and scientific laws governing UDI, universal definition of information have refuted the presupposition of materialism and the theories of chemical and biological evolution and established the existence of an eternal, all-knowing, all-powerful being called God. Those were our two goals. We have met that challenge and we have met those goals. So now... We have taken their challenge, we have accepted it, and we have answered it. So now we can issue our challenge. Anyone who disagrees with these laws and conclusions must falsify them by demonstrating the initial origin of information from purely materialistic sources. We can now issue our challenge. And folks, that challenge has never been met. Folks... Our country is under assault. For decades, we've had materialistic teaching, our children, that there is no God, there are no moral absolutes, we're the product of evolution, there is no clear meaning to life. That's why this matters.
Folks, you've just seen that this, this state, these statements are all wrong. But yet our children are being assaulted every day. When we turn on the television, we're assaulted with these concepts and philosophies. We now know they're all wrong. We need to reclaim America's heritage. We need to reclaim that we did not evolve from humans, but that God is the creator of all things, and we need not compromise it anywhere. We need to start building from the very first verse in God's word that in the beginning God created, and the and way it says it is exactly how he did it. And we need to get back our churches. We need to get back our Christian schools. We need to get back our seminaries. And the way to do that, I believe, is start training these teachers, raise up teachers who are unwilling to compromise God's word to train this next generation so they will grow up and become the next politicians, the next lawyers, and the next teachers, folks. Let's get our churches back to God's word. <laughs> It answers in Genesis, we will not compromise God's word because we believe we find answers in Genesis. Why did Jesus have to go to the cross? We have many people out there trying to tell the gospel, but they don't know why they have a gospel because it starts in the book of Genesis. Does God really exist? We just showed that he does really exist. Why should we trust the Bible? Why is there death and suffering? Every Christian needs to know how to answer that question. Where did Cain get his wife? We need to know how to answer that question because I just saw it on television again off the History Channel and they just degraded God's word in front of millions of people, folks. You need to know how to answer that question. How could Noah fit all the animals on the ark? How could Adam name all the animals in one day? What about dinosaurs? Couldn't God have used evolution, folks? We need to know how to answer those questions because the world is asking those questions and if we don't have the answers, they're going to go to television in Hollywood and get the answers, folks. God commanded us to be apologists. We are commanded to have a ready answer, not sometimes, but always. But do this in gentleness and love, because God loves them too, folks. We know there is a creator God, and that creator died for each and every one of us on the cross. God bless you, and thank you. This has been How DNA Destroys Evolution, presented by Mike Riddle. To receive a free catalog of over 200 awesome Stealing the Mind Bible studies on DVD, CD, or audio tape, information on upcoming Bible conferences in your area, or details of our missionary outreach and trips to Israel, call Compass at 1-800-977-2177 24 hours a day or on the web at compass.org.